All right, guys, uh, today we're gonna start with a few things that we wanna do to the Honda Accord. Uh, this video is gonna be about changing the fuel injectors, but make sure you check out the channel. We got fuel injectors, uh, fuel filters, we got cold air intake, we got brakes, we got the whole lineup. So please like, comment, subscribe, and follow us on the Accord. We also have, uh, we're going to go through some more bolt-ons. So we're going to have everything that you can kind of do to this thing without taking it to the dyno. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for a fuel injector change-out. Now, this really isn't that hard of a process. You have these three bolts right here. One, two, these three bolts. One, two, three. See them on the back side. But we do have hoses. We got hoses here. Um, we got hoses back here. We got several hoses that are connected up, and we'll kind of go through those as we disconnect everything. You got a hose down here on this metal bar right here. Okay. So we're gonna get all of those off. We're gonna take those three bolts off. The main thing we're gonna have to worry about is fuel pressure. Right now there's going to be some fuel pressure on there. We're just going to break this nut and we're going to leak off that fuel. So be prepared for that. Other than that, it's a pretty simple process. All right, this fuel rail bolt is 17 millimeters bolt. I've got some paper, but I also got some stuff down in my driveway to, um, catch this um, and try to uh, there we go there you go you can see it kind of coming out there be careful on this you do have a crush washer a crush washer is different than a normal washer in the fact that it's a piece of metal and it kind of crushes in there so there you go all right so there we go crush washer no pressure on our fuel rail. All right, we're gonna start heading on to these three bolts. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move a couple hoses out of my way. Remove this one. There we go. Take this off. It's gonna help us so that it's movable. So we're gonna go ahead and move that right now. Got a cheap 10 millimeter, so I guess I gotta go underneath the car and get my good 10 millimeter. Ooh, close fit. <laughs> Definitely wanna have an option or an assortment of uh, extensions and stuff available to you. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, let me go get my other 10 millimeter. <laughs> We're just really removing this because uh, once we get that fuel rail, this is going to be in the way. So we're going to want to be able to just kind of move it around a little bit. All right. So that should give us enough. Don't really have to take it all apart. It is going to be in the way, but we'll be able to get around it. All right. Now on to our three bolts. Holding this thing in. They're the ones that go all the way through, two, three. So here we go. All right, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and take off this hose because it's in my way. All right, here we go. Tuck that back there. Go ahead and loosen that one. Loosen that one. Loosen that one. Give you a better view. This one, this one. And this one, they're all the ones that run all the way through, all right? We're just gonna start wiggling this off here. Fuel rail, you're gonna get a lot of gas coming out. Pop these off, okay? So now we got our fuel rail off, right? Now we have access to our fuel injectors. Let's go ahead and get this hose off of here. Obviously, if you wanted to take your fuel rail off, there you go. And now I have easy access to all 
my fuel injectors. So we're just going to pop those out one by one. Came right out of there. All right. What we got to do here is we got to take this metal clip off and these will slide right out of there. All right, as we said, we got to get this uh, thing. You could use a knife or whatever you want, but it comes off there easy enough. Just, you don't want to lose that. Uh, my new ones did not come with one, so I definitely don't want to lose these. And then it just unplugs, okay? Now, you want to make sure you see these black O-rings, you know, go ahead and inspect your fuel rail. Make sure none of those blue O-rings o -ring, stuck in there. And uh, you can always look at everything. Everything looks good, but look how corroded some of this stuff is. I'm going to have to figure out a way to get that stuff clean. Stay tuned to the end because we've got to eliminate the resistor. we got to eliminate the resistor. These cars are operated on 5 volts. For their fuel injectors new fuel injectors come in at 12 volts so what honda did is they put in a resistor to um take that voltage down for you we're going to have to eliminate that resistor and bring it up to 12 volts so make sure you stay tuned we're going to go ahead and get these replaced i'm not going to show you me taking every single one of these off and putting them back on all right another thing i wanted to tell you each one of these bays has like a little rubber washer on it all right guys uh it is time to just mount these back on here they have a slot you can see the slot the slot that goes in there they put on there pretty tight and then it's just a matter of getting your clip back around here if i can get you a little better view here i noticed that if i just kind of if i got this side started and then get one side all the way on all right and then obviously you can see the round part goes in the back it almost doesn't look like it's gonna fit that way but it does put one side on and then do the other all right um, we're gonna go ahead and put all these on here and the other side in make sure you check them make sure they're all the way in all right next we're gonna go ahead and put it together all right, for this part, we're just gonna line up. I'm gonna go ahead and put our fuel injectors in the fuel rail because they hold better, okay? So we're just gonna put all those in there. Make sure they're all the way in. There we go. You definitely wanna make sure all your O-rings are attached. Whew. That's gonna be a tight fit. So, just getting the screws on there because those rings are so tight. Hopefully I can get at least one of these started. Wow. Okay. There we go. Work it down in there. Those new O-rings are tight. So they really put a lot of force outward but it looks like we're gonna be all right remember we still have to do the resistor all right we are going to tighten these back down just want to evenly tighten these down you don't want to get anything too cockeyed in there right <laughs> all right actually i'm gonna go ahead and start hooking up some of these hoses so i don't forget there's that one. We do have this fuel rail holes. Here's this one on this end. We're back. We do have this this one that we got to put back in, but we're going to wait. I'm gonna clip these on. Let's get this hose back on there. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Looking good. Looking good. So all we got left is the fuel rail holes, and we are done. Let's get this resistor changed. All right, guys, here's your resistor right here on the driver's side, okay? 12 volts coming in, 5 volts going back out to all four of your fuel injectors. So basically, we're going to, this is a resistor, 
that is dropping the voltage down to 5 volts. So we want it to be 12 volts. So we're going to need to attach this red wire to all five of these black wires. What you could do is you could just cut it, strip all four of them, and put a big old wire nut on there. And that would do you just fine. So um, that's what we got to figure out. How, what do you want it to look like is really what it all boils down to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take this out. Uh, I am going to basically just wire nut them all together. And then I'm going to put a piece of heat shrink on top of it so you'll never even know. Um, and I'm going to put it right back there. So I'll show you kind of how I'm going to do that. So realistically, the wires going into the resistor are just going to be abandoned. So I'm going to try to cut those about in half in case I ever decide to put it back together again. Okay. Like I said, you could just take this, strip all four of these, put a wire nut over it. And plug it right back in and you're done remember we're just trying to get the 12 volts back to all four of those this is going in changing it to 5 volts and then sending it back out on these black ones because this is stranded wire you want to be real careful you don't want to pull off any extra stands at 16 16 16 gauge them kind of long just because I've got to get all these pieces of wire together right <laughs> see we're just gonna tie all that together we want to make sure everything's making very good contact uh, remember you can just put a wire nut on these right so I just kind of fan them out try to interlace them that's basically all we're doing right <laughs> we got one big wire nut that <laughs> all right I'm gonna put a piece of heat shrink on there to kind of make it look nice and to uh, try to waterproof it just a little bit right and it's not gonna be perfect but there we go back in there 10 millimeter in case you didn't figure it out yet. <laughs> Got this one from Hobb of Rape. You can get them on Amazon. This little wrench has really helped out a lot. And uh, all we got to do right now is put the fuel rail on. All right, our final step here is going to be to put the um, fuel rail back in place. Put uh, the hose from the fuel filter onto the fuel rail back in place. I'm missing a crush washer, so let me find that real quick. And that's about it. 17 millimeter, and then we'll put these hoses back on. All right, here's the other crush washer. Definitely want to make sure you got both of those on there. 17 millimeter. Want to make sure that's relatively tight. There we go. Let's get all these hoses back together. There we go. Don't forget this one. Gonna have to put our little throttle cable back on. Right there. 